retail complex in the country. But it's not just a hot spot for a shopping spree. If you walk through these doors, expect to fend off sharks, ride 60 feet above the ground on a quiet coaster, and get a front seat at one of the mall's signature events. It's a virtual city with its own town square. We'll take you behind the scenes to meet the mall's law enforcers. Get down on the ground right now. Greet the girls who keep customers coming back for more. And even take a walk down the aisle. We'll uncover the key to its spectacular design and find out what makes it a sight to be seen. So grab your shopping bag and your walking shoes as we take an unforgettable trip inside Mall of America. It's a mall of massive proportions, the nation's largest shopping and entertainment complex in the heart of the Midwest. With over 520 stores, 20,000 parking spots, and 4.2 million square feet of floor space, the Mall of America has got something for everyone. That's why it attracts an astounding 43 million people each year, and more visitors than Disneyland, Graceland, and the Grand Canyon combined. And one of the mall's biggest fans is one of Minnesota's most famous citizens. Traditionally, I go to the mall because I'm one of those shoppers who I dislike shopping. And so I like to get it all done in one fail swoop. And the mall provides that for me. If it's not there, it doesn't exist. With a daily population of over 100,000 people, the Mall of America boasts more inhabitants than its own hometown of Bloomington, Minnesota a suburb just outside of Minneapolis. The Mega Mall draws in visitors from virtually every corner of the earth who fly into Minneapolis' international airport just three miles down the road. Tour companies from Japan and England even offer direct flights just to visit the Mall of America. And shoppers from nearby states often fly in for a day of fun. It's awfully fun to fly into the mall, and it's fun to entice my uh, children to fly with me. Uh, visits, quick trip, go shopping, and then go home. They love to tell their friends they've been to the Mall of America. Their mom flew them there for the day, and so that's a big thing in Iowa. Chances are you'll find what you're looking for here. Stores, stores, and more stores line the mall's four miles of walkways. And they're not just what you'd expect, either. This giant complex is home to a myriad of one-of-a-kind shops, including four stores devoted exclusively to Mall of America memorabilia. You're going to find a lot of quaint little shops out there, little specialty shops that you can really get caught up in and things that you don't normally expect to find at the mall. You're going to find them at the Mall of America. There are so many stores here, spending just 10 minutes in each one, would take you more than 86 hours. But the Mall of America is more than a massive retail complex. Locals call it a city within a city. And for good reason. Once you set foot inside, you'll practically never have to leave. The space offers all the amenities of a large urban center, including a high school, a university, even a doctor's office. And like any large and diverse community, it also has a storied past. The site used to be home to Metropolitan Stadium, where Minnesota's baseball and football teams, the Twins and the Vikings, once played. It's also where, in 1967, Baseball Hall of Famer Harmon Killebrew hit a historic 520-foot home run that soared into the stadium's second deck. Today, a bleacher seat commemorating the event sits in the exact location where that home run would have hit. And exactly 520 feet away, you'll find Metropolitan Stadium's home plate, which has also been preserved in its original spot. And the crowds still roar here today. Each year, the shopping mecca sponsors the Minnesota Vikings Cheerleader Finals, an eagerly anticipated event that attracts visitors from around the country. 
We like to host our final editions at the Mall of America because it ties in the relationship of the Vikings' original home in the Met Stadium and the new home of the Mall of America on that same location. If the Mall of America is a self-contained city, you might call this spot Town Square. It's known as the Rotunda, and today, 50 young hopefuls have gathered to vie for a hot spot on the famed cheerleading squad. Girls who make the cut will perform for 65,000 fans at Minneapolis's Metrodome Stadium. But tonight, they are competing in front of 3,000 friends, fans, and family members who've gathered here at the mall's makeshift stadium. It's great to have the finals here at the Mall of America because it's a close emulation to what it's like to perform in the dome with all types of different people just cheering you on so you can just have a great time. It used to be the site of the Met Center and the first home of the Minnesota Vikings, so it has um, a different memento sake in that, that we do get to audition here. And here's something that may surprise you. Even longtime veterans of the squad must earn their spot on the team year after year. Very nervous right now, even though this is my third year. It doesn't get any easier every year because you never know from one year to the next if you're going to make the team or not. It really is a clean slate every year. It's decision time for the judges. What's it take to win them over? There's so much that we look for. They're representing the Vikings organization as well as the state of Minnesota. So somebody that needs to really have good communication skills, um, very talented, energetic. While the judges tabulate the final scores, the anxious contestants head home to await the results. And if they've been selected, they will receive a phone call in the morning. It's a nice way to keep the memory of the Met Stadium. And just being here and thinking, you know, this used to be a field too. And it's, it's a lot of fun. Blending the past and present helps ensure unique experiences for the nearly one million shoppers who visit each week. So what's the key to the mall's success? To find out, you'll have to look past the towering 80-foot-high concrete walls. It's not particularly distinguished architecturally on the outside, but like opening up a, uh, a geode, once you get inside, there's all kinds of eye candy and gimmickry to attract uh, the shopper's eye. That eye candy, combined with a carefully planned structural design, has brought in over 350 million shoppers since the mall first opened in 1992. Yay! The interior was painstakingly assembled by a team of 40 architects and designers who spent nearly four years planning the and layout of the giant structure. The trick to creating a space easy to navigate was to design the mall in the shape of a giant rectangle, enabling shoppers to stroll through the entire complex without ever backtracking. Because each floor has over a mile of storefront space, the designers also had to make sure shoppers wouldn't be overwhelmed by the mall's immense scale. Their secret solution? Create four malls in one, each with a unique design and color scheme, so visitors can orient themselves within the enormous structure. For the North Garden Wing, designers strive to create a European street experience. West Market emulates an 1890s railway station. South Avenue recreates the look and feel of a 1920s Grand Hotel. And East Broadway attracts shoppers with a modern high-tech design. To bring in large crowds, planners knew they'd have to do more than create a unique look and layout. They also needed to create a safe environment for shoppers. Take a look at these nondescript glass spheres. They may look like they're just part of the decor, but they actually conceal hidden spy cameras designed to document shoppers' every move. 150 of these eyes in the sky beam their signals back to a central control room where cameras can follow a potential suspect anywhere in the building. The average person when they walk in the mall, I believe, doesn't notice the globes uh, or know that there's a, a camera system in place to follow them. To monitor these cameras and to keep them misbehaving to a minimum inside the mall, a force of 120 security guards keeps a constant watch. These officers take on everyone from rowdy guests and gangbangers to underage drinkers. It's a tough gig that requires a lot of training. That's why before these guards can walk the beat, 
they have to learn the ropes. Sir, I've got some options for you tonight. You are under arrest at this point for assaulting that individual. Rob Waller, a former Marine Corps officer, teaches new recruits the techniques used to defuse potentially dangerous situations. Don't even think about messing with this guy. Get down on the ground right now. Get down on the ground. Put your hands out to your sides. Cross your feet. Palms up. On the rare occasion where force is necessary, we teach very effective, easy to learn techniques uh, that minimize the potential to harm to both the officer as well as the person that we may have to arrest. Do you have any weapons? Once the trainees graduate from the eight-week program, they'll be sent out into the mall to seek out any signs of trouble. Officers, as they're walking through their assigned areas, will also observe people. As they're shopping in the mall, you get that gut feeling that maybe this person isn't up to, uh, you know, legitimate uh, means. In addition to the hidden cameras and skilled security force, the mall has another secret weapon. This one trained to sniff out trouble. This is BJ. She's a two-year-old in Belgium, Illinois, and she's an explosive detection dog. And she works here at the Mall of America, and she works with me. BJ is one of two crime-fighting canines. Each day, these four-legged officers canvass the mall, carefully inspecting railings, trash cans, and doorways for any suspicious packages. Of course, it's sometimes hard to do your job when you're the center of attention. But BJ and her partner don't seem to mind. She uh, makes my job pretty easy, and uh, she makes it very much more enjoyable. I make contact with the guests, and um, a lot of guests have more contact with me because of her, and that's, um, that's why we're here. We're here to help out. They're working to take a bite out of crime in this virtual city, protecting the thousands of shoppers who pass through this mini metropolis every day. Each year, the 43 million visitors who travel to Minnesota's Mall of America pump over a billion and a half dollars into the state's economy, making it one of the country's most successful malls. But the concept of a giant retail and entertainment complex in America's heartland wasn't always embraced by everyone in the community. When the mall idea first came about, I thought they were crazy as did a lot of people. Everyone said they're gonna build what? And you know, most of us thought this is nuts. But I have openly admitted I was as wrong as everybody because it has been the biggest success story that Minnesota has seen in many, many years. The enormous size of the mall, along with a groundbreaking look and layout, ensured its success by attracting visitors from around the world. But it's not just the design and scale that make the mall unique. The shopping center is also a trend center when it comes to climate control. In a city with an average winter temperature of 27 degrees, would you believe the Mammoth Building isn't even heated? That's right, only the entrances and exits get a little artificial warmth. How does the rest of the mall stay toasty? A combination of body heat and a 250,000 square foot array of skylights, the world's largest, keep the mall balmy all year round. Before opening time, the temperature inside the Mall of America is in the low 60s. By noon, the crowds and sun have raised the temperature by nearly 10 degrees. The combination of body heat and sunlight works so well, in fact, that massive vents are needed to bring in cold air from the outside, even in the dead of winter, just to keep the mall from getting too hot. From the top down, every detail of this structure serves a specific purpose, and by design, this mega complex offers virtually every pleasure under the sun, including the country's largest indoor amusement park, Camp Snoopy. When you stroll around Camp Snoopy, it's easy to forget you're actually in a mall. And that's precisely the idea. The goal is to create an outdoor style park completely indoors. A necessity if you want to operate year round in the often icy Midwest. One of the things that we did in designing the park was to study other attempts at indoor amusement parks, most of which frankly had not succeeded. And uh, we tried to pinpoint what were some of the elements that were missing. 
Camp Snoopy's designers discovered that the secret to creating an outdoor setting indoors was to landscape the park with over 30,000 live plants and trees. But that presented a unique set of challenges. Of course, being in an indoor environment, we can't have all these pesticide fumes flowing through the park all the time, so we've come up with creative solutions. To keep the plants and trees healthy, 20,000 live ladybugs provide natural pest control in the park. There was some concern as to this had never been done before on this scale, how would it do? And it has turned out to be one big greenhouse, and the, the plants and the trees have really thrived and done very well in the park. The plants do so well, in fact, it's raised another challenge for the mall's designers. How to keep the humidity from getting out of control in this artificial jungle. The humidity built up in this big space, you know, would we have rain clouds developing in the park? So they had to design the air handling and climate control systems to make sure that the humidity levels were monitored and the airflow and the air exchange was, was adequate to prevent those things from happening. The designers didn't stop there. Take a look at these cement pathways. In order to create the appearance of a rolling landscape, they were built with a series of peaks and valleys. There are no flat surfaces here. The highest and lowest points differ in elevation by 15 feet, a subtle detail which adds to the illusion that you're outside. But one of the biggest challenges of running an amusement park indoors is operating a roller coaster that runs without a ruckus. We understood that being in the indoor environment, there'd be a lot of sound issues and noise issues and reverberation and so forth that we'd have to deal with. The solution? While most coasters have steel wheels on their cars, this ride uses rubber instead, much like the wheels on a roller skate. Rubber is also hidden in the track itself. With our track supports, every column, they're mounted in rubber, which actually helps also sound the, uh, deaden the sound and uh, would obviously help in the vibration sense also. But beyond design, engineers also face the daily challenge of keeping the rides running smoothly and efficiently. Their most time-consuming task? Maintaining Paul Bunyan's log chute, a towering water ride that plunges thrill-seekers 40 feet down into a massive 375,000-gallon river. It's the only ride of its kind in the world built completely indoors. And its central command is tucked far from public view. This area right here is what we call our, our the, the log ride shop. I mean, right here you are inside the mountain. Back of us is service level corridors and retail space again. Because the log ride operates indoors, chlorine and other chemicals can't be used to keep the water clean. Instead, this 375,000 gallon river is forced through this elaborate pump and filtration system four times every hour. It's a pretty high maintenance area just because of the filtration when you've got that much water in the park. There's always stuff ending up in the, in the water, dirt, garbage, trash. It has to be cleaned out on a daily basis. Keeping the water flowing through these enormous pumps requires vast amounts of electricity. And the log flume uses more of it than any other attraction here contributing to a power bill that adds up to $34,000 a month for Camp Snoopy. But paying the bill is no problem when you consider that visitors to Camp Snoopy spend over $25 million a year in the park. Trend-setting design and imaginative attractions entice up to a quarter million daily visitors to the Mall of America during the peak holiday season. To accommodate the crowds, four bustling parking garages surround the structure. With all this traffic, getting the crowds quickly and safely from the streets to the stores takes swift thinking and a certain amount of skill. Move up to aisle E, run the traffic to the north. If there's anyone who can handle the high-pressure gig, it's this guy. Roy Nielsen is a former air traffic controller who's been managing parking at the mall since it first opened in 1992. It's a lot of quick judgment calls. You know, air traffic controllers, uh, you use a lot of uh, common sense and quick judgment. And I do basically do a lot of the same thing here. To control the intense flow of traffic in these gargantuan seven-story structures, Roy whizzes around the maze of levels, analyzing complex traffic patterns and making critical decisions about which sectors to shut down. 
Thanks to Roy's expertise, most shoppers have no trouble finding a spot among the 20,000 spaces. But when it's time to go home, you might need a little help remembering where you parked. That's why the mall's planners designed a simple system to help visitors locate their cars in the three square miles of parking garage. Each level is assigned a state, a symbol like Nevada is the dice, and a color. Okay. And that's to, to aid the guests on trying to keep to remember where they're parked at. Of course, the system can't work if you don't watch the signs. Fortunately, Roy's here to help with that, too. They come into the ramps and they get confused of which level they're at. We just ask them certain questions and they just about tell us where they're parked. Finding your way around here may seem like a daunting task, but it's as easy as pie. Whether you pull in for a quick lunch, a fast ride on a roller coaster, or just a leisurely day shopping, make sure you take a good look around. You'll see some of the best laid plans on Earth. And they're all by design. Bloomington, Minnesota, a town with one of the harshest climates in the world. Here, the temperature can fall from 100 degrees to 40 below in just a few short weeks. To escape the elements, many Midwesterners head for the Mall of America, a 78-acre shopping and entertainment complex where it's always 70 degrees and bright inside. Yeah. But this giant structure offers more than balmy weather. It's also a thriving social center. I love the fact that they have so much entertainment out there, not just the rides and Camp Snoopy. You've got all your food places out there. Throughout the mall, 20 sit-down restaurants and 30 fast food outlets cater to thousands of hungry shoppers all day long. And if shopping isn't your ideal way to build up an appetite, the Mall of America is also a place to meet, mingle, and party. Six nightclubs, a space-age bowling alley, and five themed restaurants pack the top floor. The most popular watering hole? Hooters where dancers and drinkers stop to refuel with platters of food and pitchers of beer. And waitstaff serve up more than a smile. We're usually pretty busy. Um, we do all of our own food running, all of our own order taking, busting tables. It's a lot more work than most serving jobs. Jessica and Jamie are two of the most well-known waitresses here. And they've got an advantage. They're not only co-workers, they're also twins. Well, I started working here first, and then once Jamie realized how much money I was making, she started to work here, too. Not very good, but two beers. <laughs> For all the Hooters girls, the most important job requirement is to keep the customers smiling. Attention, Hooters! It's Adam's 19th birthday today! Let's give him a hand! <laughs> it's your birthday, yes, it's true! The guys are a lot nicer than you expect them to be. They kind of are cocky and stuff. When they come in here, they're all with their friends. Oh, Hooters girls. But once they get at the table, they're just like a bunch of little boys. Say happy birthday to you. Hot wings, beer, and for dessert, a little eye candy. That's how the Hooters girls keep their customers coming back for more. As a social hub, the mall provides all the food and fun your heart desires. But it's also a hot spot for romance. Many times when people are meeting on a blind date, being set up by friends, the mall is a very, very popular place to go for a first date. The giant complex has just about everything young lovers could want, from a 14-screen movie theater to a walk in the park. But couples looking to take their relationship to another level should seek out this unusual venue. There's no reason to travel to Vegas for a quick wedding when you can get hitched right here at the mall's very own Chapel of Love. We rehearsed them, we married them, the marriage license is signed, they're husband and wife, and we congratulate them. They're off into the mall in 20 minutes to celebrate or shop. It may be convenient, but you gotta wonder, why would anyone want to get married in a mall? We wanted to keep the actual ceremony itself very small and intimate with just family and our closest friends. 
not for everybody, but for us, it's perfect. It's the ideal thing that we needed and what we found, and we're real happy with it. John and Angela are on to something. So far, 3,500 other couples have tied the knot at the Chapel of Love. We have had weddings from every state in the United States. We've had um, several from Europe from Japan. We've had couples get married here that met on the internet, one from Scotland, one from Minnesota, and this worked out for them. We get a, a large number where it is a first-time wedding, and, and it's probably the fun of being in the Mall America and the affordability. Just how affordable? A simple ceremony at the Chapel of Love can cost less than $300. And the chapel offers one benefit you won't find anywhere else, a massive audience. Most couples mingle in the mall after their marriage. It's a great way to show off your new gown and the guys are all dressed in their tuxes. It's kind of a fun place to hang around and get congratulated. With clubs, restaurants, and even a wedding chapel, this place truly is a mini metropolis. And like a real city, it even has its own police station to handle the mall's most severe criminal activity. Well, the police department has the responsibilities for the laws and the criminal offenses that happen in the mall here. We deal with a lot of retail crime, shoplifting, credit card fraud, check forgery. Sergeant Jeff Potts heads up a crime-fighting cadre of five full-time police officers who walk the beat at all hours. On a Saturday, 100, 150,000 people in this place, and so there's shoplifting that goes on every day, uh, you know, and we deal with it on a daily basis. Today, an alleged shoplifter has been apprehended by the owner of a store called As Seen on TV. As the cops arrive on the scene, they find that the owner has detained the suspect in a storage room, and he's got some merchandise concealed in his jacket. Hi. Hey. What's going on? Okay, take your hands out of your pockets for me. Okay. Um, the story is... So I asked him to step back here, and he had the old navy bag, and he had it stuffed with all this. But he was telling me he was going to pay for it, and he wasn't, hadn't taken anything, and, and that whole story. You never actually in the store with it? He no. did not. In order to uh, prosecute, the person or the owner of the store, the manager of the store, needs to um, see the person, can, uh, select it, conceal it, and then walk out with no attempt to pay for the items. And uh, none of those were uh, reached, so we uh, were unable to prosecute it this time. No arrest this time. The store owner gets back all his merchandise, and the suspect gets a lucky break. But with these officers on the case, some shoppers with sticky fingers will end up spending more time in the mall than they bargained for. Down three flights in a freight elevator, through a restricted hallway, and past these guarded doors lies a covert area few shoppers will ever see in person, at least not if they can help it. This room right here is a uh, small holding room for if we have uh, multiple arrests going on at the same time. We do have a uh, booking processing station here where we can actually take their photograph, enter it into the uh, database here so that their booking photo is on file throughout the entire state of Minnesota. Think that's high tech? Take a look at this. You'd expect James Bond to carry one, but a mall cop? If we're uh, out here at the Mall of America and we arrest somebody or we're uh, in the process of trying to identify somebody, this here computer is able to read the person's fingerprint. This gets beamed back to a database in Hennepin County. They're able to look at it and send us back the person's full name and date of birth. These cops book up to a dozen suspects a day here. And when the mall's at its busiest, the action can be non-stop. Another call has just come in. Two shoplifters have been caught red-handed by a store security manager. This time, Officer Bitney takes the case. She's placed you both under citizen's arrest for theft. I accept her arrest. She saw these two guys collect merchandise from her store. They concealed it. One concealed it in his jacket. The other one uh, put it down his pants. And then they walked out without paying for it. It depends. Have you guys ever been arrested before? No. Bitney determines that one of the suspects is a minor. He's let go with a citation and a court date. But the other perp isn't so lucky. It's up to 90 days in jail and or a $700 fine. He's taken down to the police station in shackles. Just take the cuffs off, yeah. 
I do this, put your hands on top of your head. Then fingerprinted. And this is where he'll be spending the night. Fighting crime is serious business at the Mall of America, and it can be rough on the soles of these law enforcers' shoes. Did you know these officers walk an average of eight miles a day? But they're not complaining. Well, I think the more that the criminals see the police, that it's probably going to put something in the back of their mind that there's, there's police here, and, and uh, you know, we hope that that's going to obviously deter them from doing whatever criminal acts that they had planned, maybe if they didn't see any police out here. With Sergeant Potts and his crew patrolling, this thriving social mecca continues to attract a growing number of visitors. Looking for a night of fun? Finger-licking fair? And even true love. With more than 500 stores, a giant indoor amusement park, and four levels of entertainment, the Mall of America is unlike any other shopping center on Earth. Over 100,000 people stream in each day, and longtime visitors know that once they cross the threshold, they should expect the unexpected. That's the great thing about the Mall of America to me. They're forever changing, modernizing, and staying, you know, on top of things. They're always one step ahead of the time. We're not just talking about the unusual shops and attractions here. Would you believe this Midwest shopping mecca is also a premier place to find fame and fortune? Once a year, the mall's rotunda becomes a hotspot for pretty faces, hoping to grace the pages of the world's most famous fashion magazines. Any guy, any girl, ages 13 to 24, no obligation, just going to have a good time today, and maybe by the end of the day, you're going to be that next person that's going to be represented by elite model management. Shannon Hill is director of scouting for Chicago-based Elite Modeling Agency. She's come to the Mall of America with the hope of finding the next fresh face. I think the Midwest is a good place to scout because you're going to find maybe people who are not necessarily aware of the business so much. So you may get more kind of a cleaner, all-American, fresh look. The high-stakes event attracts hundreds of eager contestants, all anxious to be discovered. You don't expect for a fashion show, a model search to be going on in a mall, and then you come here and it's true. I was just wandering around the mall shopping with my friends. I drove up for the weekend, and I saw signs for the elite model search. And I thought, what the heck? But not everyone's here just to model. Some contestants hope to show off their unique talents as well. If I win, I will do whatever it takes uh, with the elite. You know what I'm saying? I'll go as far as they can push it. I think I got a pretty good chance, pretty good looking guy. I mean, overall, I got, got a little character to me, I think. So what does it take to make it as a model? The right look, of course. But you might be surprised to find out you don't have to be picture perfect. Sometimes what's surprising to people is that you may have a girl who's been told all her life that she is so beautiful and that she should be a model. But that's not necessarily what is happening in fashion right now at this moment. Maybe they have bigger ears or their nose are a little crooked or their eyes or maybe someone would look at them and not necessarily say that they are beautiful. And a lot of times that's a model. As Shannon looks on, the 90 contestants take their turn on the catwalk. Soon, the judges whittle the list down to just 10 finalists. But with so many pretty faces to choose from, Shannon's having a hard time making up her mind. So instead of just choosing two winners, she picks three. After hours and hours of deliberating, we have decided. It was a very, very, very hard decision. So these are our winners today, Nicole, Brian, and Lauren. My plan is for the winners that we see today, that you're eventually going to see them in your fashion magazine. Who would ever suspect that the next supermodel might not be working the runways in Paris or Milan, but right here at the Mall of America? It's been one of the best events that I have done in any mall, and I look forward to coming back here because we found some really great people. For visitors seeking a different kind of thrill, the mall offers another unexpected attraction just three flights down in the 20,000 square foot basement. Underwater Adventures is the largest mall aquarium in the country. 
located 30 feet below the shopping center, it's home to 50 sharks, 200 turtles, and 3,500 other exotic sea creatures. The visitor who hasn't been here before looks at the Mall of America and just doesn't have the concept that there can be an ocean under Barnes & Noble. At Underwater Adventures, it's easy to get up close and personal with these denizens of the deep. You'll literally walk through water, 1.2 million gallons of it, down a 300-foot tunnel, separated from deadly sharks by nothing more than a two-inch piece of acrylic. How does it all work? Sneak a peek backstage. When you go up behind the scenes, you are in fact on top of the tanks. So you're looking down at the tunnel, you're seeing people gliding through, enjoying the various animals. It's easy to spot the visitors below, because the water in these massive tanks is always crystal clear, thanks to the 35 mammoth water pumps that filter the entire aquarium twice each hour. One of the most amazing things behind the scenes is we've got more pipes and pumps and motors than a small city does. This is what we call Shark Alley. As you can see, the brown sharks, which are kind of those gray colored ones down on the bottom, they're very active in this area, so usually you see a lot of action from them. If checking out the sharks isn't enough of a thrill, you can actually dive right in and take a dip with these deadly predators. We have a dive program, and it's called Swim with the Sharks. And that is a program where anybody who is 18 years or older and a certified scuba diver can come in and dive in our exhibit. We are swimming right alongside these gigantic sharks, looking for shark teeth on the bottom. It's awesome. The Mall of America is one of only two aquariums in the country where adventure seekers can actually swim with sharks. Sound dangerous? It can be. These feisty fish have jaws strong enough to tear through human flesh. Obviously it is an activity where injuries could occur, but we take lots of precautions to make sure that they don't. To ensure that the divers don't become dinner, the sharks are fed the night before and a trained instructor always leads the way, keeping a safe distance of at least two feet between the guests and the predators. As they explore this virtual ocean, the divers discover a world far removed from the hustle and bustle of shoppers above. Experienced divers rate this as one of the best dives, if not the best dive they've ever had. And that's the idea at the Mall of America, offers something for everyone give visitors some unexpected thrills and make the experience unforgettable. That's how this massive entertainment mecca keeps 43 million customers each year coming back for more. The Mall of America in Bloomington, Minnesota welcomes visitors from virtually every corner of the world. Each year they drop more than 800 million dollars here. But while the multitude of attractions is undoubtedly a big draw, many travel to the Mega Mall with a single-minded purpose, to shop till they drop. I bought my green outfit, my pajamas, orange capris, cute orange top to go with it, capris from Old Navy, this white top that is just waiting to get dirty pretty much, shoes, these and these. Sounds like a trip to the Mall of America might break the bank. But guess what? A shopping spree here might actually save you money. We're one of the few states in the nation that has no sales tax on clothing. So you can buy all of that Disney World stuff cheaper here than you can at Disney World. You'll have no problem finding treasures to take home here. But getting them home could be a much more difficult task unless you know where to unload. Savvy shoppers stop off at Postmark America, the mall's own branch of the U.S. Post Office. Postmark America is the most unique post office in the United States, actually in the world. We're like the post office that serves the city within the Mall of America. Like many other shops in the mall, you can buy shirts, hats, or even collectibles here. 
but this is the only store where you'll walk out with fewer packages than you brought in. Winter sports, snowboarding? We have snowboarding on it? We had four sisters from Texas, and one day they were in here four times, and they would ship out, and then they would go shopping again, and then they would come back, and they spent their whole week here. With customers like that, it's not surprising that Postmark America ships out well over one ton of mail a day during the busy holiday season. And no matter what you want to send, they're here to help. We've had a, a dead seahorse that needed to be shipped for examination. We've had a dog collar that was express mailed to Columbia, South America. We also had a freeze-dried turkey dinner sent to a college student from a loving mom and dad. After they've lightened their load at the post office, most visitors head back into the mall for more shopping, dining, or deep sea diving. But with so many things to do and see under one roof, some shoppers may never want to leave. And soon, they may not have to. Ever. Believe it or not, the massive Mall of America is poised to grow even larger with a 5.7 million square foot expansion designed to give shoppers even more to choose from. Not only will the complex add more stores, offices, and a performing arts center, there are even plans to build residential housing. Ready to move in? Don't put that deposit down yet. It will be years before construction begins on this 53-acre site. But once phase two is finished, expect them all to be even bigger and better. So you could actually live here, work here, you know, come and play here, get married here, go to high school, college, daycare. Um, it's really, you know, the concept of that city. In the meantime, this action-packed shopping center will continue to deliver heart-stopping thrills and a spectacular experience to the hundreds of thousands of visitors who pass through its doors each day. With its Midwestern beauties, deep sea adventures,